Art students, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back in the classroom with another lesson. And today's lesson is going to be on mastering perspective. Now, perspective is one of those things that a lot of people try to get away from doing, but eventually you're going to have to learn to do it. And I know there are some of you guys out there that are ready to do it. You've got the body down and you're ready to put that character on a floor in a room in a in a in a airplane or a car or something but you just don't have that perspective down so we're going to get into perspective and i know a lot of you guys are not ready for perspective but i don't want to just keep doing easy draw a hand or draw a face picture like that i want to round it out so everybody has a chance to lift up their skills a little bit don't kick the camera pod brian don't kick it sorry about the shaking wasn't an earthquake so this one is going to be on perspective. So let's go ahead and I looked away. What is wrong with me? <laughs> let's go ahead and get into the video before my mind disappears again. Let's go. All right. Good morning, class, and welcome to Perspective Mastery Part 1. I don't know if that's going to be the title, but Mastering Perspective. Well, anyway, this is going to be a Part 1 because I'm not going to make it too long because this is kind of complicated, but it's not at the same time as you will see. All right, so first thing, let's just say that there is a bomb, okay? So this is a bomb right here. This is a case. This is like a suitcase size bomb. And it's put way in the background so that when it explodes, it's not going to, you know, hurt anybody. Now, this bomb is full of little metal balls, metal BBs, probably about, say about that big. Now, this bomb is going to go off because you can't stop it. You, you, you can't diffuse it so it's going to go off in like three seconds so three two one so boom that explodes so now it explodes and it sends those bb's balls metal balls everywhere every different direction right and here they are they just flew out in every different direction So because that it exploded, that little case exploded right here at this point, you have your one point perspective now. So by doing this every time, so imagining that you have something in the center and it explodes and it throws all these lines out, that is the start of doing your one point perspective. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because I had um, someone write in and ask me to show them how to do like cars and buildings and other things like that, background stuff. I had somebody ask me earlier to do like rocks and trees and so forth, but all that is pretty much useless if you don't know how to do perspective. So I said, let me take a few minutes and just show people how to do perspective. Now perspective is really easy, but it's really hard at the same time. It's kind of like a big math problem. If you can't get all those numbers through your head, then it throws you off. And it can it, it throws me off at times too, because I don't do it every day. So from here, I want to show you how to do a better grid. So whenever you start drawing, you'll always have that perspective grid. And that's how it starts. You have to build on something. You have to have a foundation. So this is a one point. So getting into two point, which we're not going to get into, let's just say if you had another bomb right here and it exploded the same way the first one exploded, then that would be your two point perspective. Now, if you had a third point, it wouldn't really be over here. It would have to be at the top or the bottom. But that's that's like getting into calculus and we won't get into that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to start a grid and we'll just build up on that to give you something to draw your cars and your trees and your houses and stuff on. So this point, by the way, could be anywhere. Let's just say, here's your sheet of paper. This is your sheet of paper. And why didn't you just use the whole sheet of paper, Brian? I don't know. And you can have your point anywhere. That explosion could come from anywhere on the paper, but you just want to use one. It doesn't make a difference where it explodes from. It just explodes on uh, some point of the paper. Now, it also, that depends on the, the, the angle, your camera angle, or how you want to see your people or how you want to see your background. That determines where you put that one point that your lines will explode from. 
So let's not waste this piece of paper. Let's flip this piece of paper over. So, <clears throat> and the so, I always use so. I don't know why I use another word for so. I say that, but in a, then again, I, I continue to use so. And if my voice sounds a little rough, it's because I think I'm catching a cold, number one. And number two, my tooth cracked and broke off from around a filling in the back of my mouth, my molar. <clears throat> so part of that filling is like sticking out like this. So my tongue is hitting that. The more I talk, the more it hits that little piece of filling. And it doesn't feel too good. But yet, I'm doing a video for you guys because... I woke up this morning and it hit me what to do today. And that's how I get my ideas for my videos. Usually when I wake up, my mind is clear and something speaks to me. So <clears throat> here's the um, point that we use. Something speaks to me and tells me what to do, what the people need, what you guys want to learn. So as I say, here's the point. Now, the first thing you want to do when starting your perspective grid is to do a plus symbol. Straight down the middle. I'm freehanding this, so, you know, bear with me. It's best to use a ruler when you start getting really into drawing in your books. You want to do your plus symbol. After that, you want to do your multiplication time symbol or do an X. For you people that failed in math, do an X. And everything, every line has to come across that point. It has to be in the center of that point. Hence, one point, point perspective. Okay, so now that you have that, <clears throat> the best thing to do is take these points here, between these points, and let's just say, let's square this off. Let's take this, no, let's just, let's square this off right, right here. Just make it easier for me, because that way I don't have to go off the paper. And this would be my, like, my borders. Okay, now the one thing about perspective is it has to be, you know, right when you do perspective lines. So we have this. So let's just say, and this should be right here in the center. Just, just be picky about it. Let's just do that. Put that in the center. That's close enough. That's in the center. Let's take this one and center this one. And as I said, one line, <clears throat> one line wrong could throw everything off, especially when you're doing some serious, serious city background. So we have that. <clears throat> so let's say between this, let's go center, center line. Let's just say this is the center between this, put a point here, and then draw this line from there to there. Same thing, center, center point here to here. And it doesn't have to be center in the beginning, but it's just best to be centered here to here is your line here here there to there here to here here to here and this is going to be part one because as I said this is going to be kind of like a lot of information and some people are not able to sit very long and look at a whole long video. Some people just don't have the patience. <clears throat> okay, so now we have that. The best to do, and I always do, I always have this center one, and then I put two more in the center. And I'll just do these real quick. You can have a million lines if you choose, but these are sufficient. These, how many? One, two, three lines, four, five actually, in between each one. Three in between each one is enough to get you started. So, center, that one. What did I do? One, two, three, two, three. Is that too many? And that's what I'm saying about, it gets you, it gets you thrown off. What did I do? Okay, I did the center one. I did two plus the center. Okay, so why did I just center that? That. See what I'm saying about perspective, people? It's like a hard math problem. So I had this one. I had the center one. Eh, just do it. Just do it. My lines are crooked, but just do it. So put one here. Put one 
here, put one here, one here. And as a, if you get crazy, you can continue to put another one here, another one there. But usually these are the basic lines that I start out with. If I do a grid. Because you don't want too many lines. Because that will throw you off. This one is so small. We'll just throw this in there anyway. Center here. And you can just keep going all day, but as I say, it'll throw them off because once you start drawing, you might not use one of these lines. You might have to add your own line in it, but that's enough to get me started for now. now. At this point, at every point here, you want to go straight across. I'm going to use a ruler because it might make it a little quicker and better. And these lines should fall on the opposite line. This is why I say you should use a ruler. But this is just grid lines. That was straight across already. So it goes across there, this point here. And as I say, this point should have fell on this point. If you did it right, it would, but that's for you to do perfectly later. So now you have that. And then the same goes for the bottom lines here. The bottom lines should fall, they should match their opposite counterpart some way, somehow. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This is that straight up and down line, so this one's going to be straight up and down. And this is not really a drawing pencil, I should have used my red pencil. Now you have your perspective grid, and out of this, you can draw anything except circles. Let me switch pencils because that one is, it's, it's, that's just your basic writing pencil and it's getting fuzzy. So as I say, if you can see this, if it's not too screwed up, this is your basic perspective grid. All right, now before I go any further, let me show you this is a, a shortcut because you actually in the beginning you don't need all of these lines you'll add your own lines a lot of times you really don't need that many but I'm gonna show you a shortcut to do it so you have your point you do your X you do your X you do your plus and then you do your X and then you go from there so you can add whatever you want here so to draw a box then you go to that point. So you don't really need the lines, but it does help if you have the lines already in there. So this is a shortcut for you guys. And one thing that would be good to have, and if you're going to do this professionally, is a light table. A light table is something you're going to have to invest your money into a light table to have it or to, to do it right. Because if you have so many lines, you can't draw these lines on your paper on your comic book paper, and let me grab this real quick. <clears throat> you can't draw your lines on this comic book paper and then try to ink over top of it. It's just going to be impossible to do. So that's where a light table comes in. And let me grab a light table real quick to show you guys. I should have had it out already, but again, too stupid to do that. All right, this is a light table or AKA a light box. Let me pull the camera back. Let me set this down and pull the camera back so that you can see it. All right, so this is a light box. Basically, if it was a light table, it'd be the size of this table. So what this is, is basically, I can not I can take it out, but it's, it's hard. There is a bulb inside this. I can't see from the bottom. There's a light bulb inside of this, and when you turn it on, it lights up. Hopefully my camera won't freak out. Come on now, I know you work. There you go. And then you take 
Where is my drawing? And you put it on top of it. Like so. Then you put your drawing on that and then you can see through it to draw your lines. And this is what you're going to have to do when you get into those serious city drawings, when you're doing buildings and so forth and so on. And that's basically a light table. And I don't know, there are smaller light tables. There are bigger light tables. I don't know how much this one costs. It's been a while since I even used it. I want to say about $40, I guess, 30 cents. It might be more because, as I said, it's been a while since I used it. So that's a light table. But what I did when I was young, when I was young, uh, years ago, before I could afford a light table, was I had a coffee table. And the coffee table had a glass top. So I took uh, a lamp and I put it under the bottom of that and used that as my light table. That's my ghetto light table. But you know, an artist got to do what an artist got to do. All right, so now that we have this, let's see if I can make heads or tails out of this. Because as I said, for me, it's, it's crazy. When I see so many lines, it throws me off. So let's do this. What I see right now is... Let's just say I'm doing the interior, room interior, and I just want to take one wall because what I'm seeing here is some shelves. So let's say this is my wall here. And these lines, by following these lines, let's just say I want to do some shelves. And I have my statues or whatever I collect. You know, I have that on my wall here. Can you see that? Let's switch colors. Let's switch colors. You might be able to see it in the final cut, but it's hard for me to see that color in the monitor. And I oh, think we could use black. That way it might work better. And let's just go out this far. And this is what I say about having to uh, follow that line. Having your lines right, because if your lines are wrong, like this top shelf here, it's gonna throw everything off. So let's say they end right here. Well, since this one is out, let's say that all the shelves end on this line here. Take it to that line, bring it in. So this is what I'm saying about you adding more lines. You, you won't always use the lines that you put. You will have to add some more lines depending on your drawing. So we got this shelf here. This shelf here, and remember, it ends at these point at this line that comes up, and this one, which is just as crooked as you can, it can be, ends right here. <clears throat> so now I can put something here, and here. And this could be on the floor itself, and, and of course, right here. The line should have been right here. And now you see I have some shelves so I can stick my little figurines on there or whatever. Maybe I have a, a Batman figure, however Batman would be standing. And his cape. And he's throwing his batarang as a batarang. So by having your perspective grid, perspective line right, I didn't want to just draw a building because everybody draws buildings and so forth. But having the lines right, it makes it easy to put your stuff in perspective or put your objects in perspective. And all these lines are going back to this one point where your explosion originated from. So let's do something else in this room. So another thing is you have to, you have to know where your floor is. If you're doing an interior and you do this and you have your explosion, you have to know where your floor is. So let's say my floor is going to be right here. Let's just put the floor on this line here. Let's put the floor all the way back. If I want to put a wall somewhere, if it's going to be a small room, I'll put a wall right here. And then at this point, I would have to come from here. So let's just say, duh, 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 where's the next point? Where's the next point? Let's just say at this point right here, we'll put a wall here. So let's drop this red line, or this line, and put the wall or the floor, should I say, put the floor, this is the floor is going to go right here and across. And of course, it could have dropped on a line like this in there, but it didn't. And then you just bring this line straight up 
and then this here, back here. So if I darken this, it would be like this. And there's your wall. Let's just say the wall comes, since this is put on the edge of the wall, and it doesn't have to be on the edge of the wall, it would be, you have to follow this line here because it's on the, the floors here, up here. So, well, actually, because the floor is here, and it's going there, this would be the edge of the wall here. If I made a small room, but let's just say the wall is gonna go back here. It's not on the, on the floor. It's not on the floor. It's not against the edge of the wall. I'll make my wall right here. It's sticking out somewhere. You can see the back of the wall. You have room in the back of the wall. All right, let's say I wanted to make this open. This whole wall was, there was no wall here. It was an, there's a big opening. So you, I still want some little ceiling. So if I go up and I, let's say I follow this line. This is going to be a piece of a wall right here. So I'm going to go up here. So let's say this point here and then follow that. So it's going to be like this. So basically, there's no wall here. That's kind of like an opening, like you go into the next room and then you have your nice display case. So going straight up and down, and from that explosion line, which is just as crooked, it's gonna be like this, like that. And of course, if you have a wall, you're gonna have some thickness to your wall. Like that, cross, like that. That, that actually shows you yeah, there's, some, there's a wall that's thick, because the wall is not paper thin, unless it's in Japan. So now here's my opening, and if I want to draw something on this wall, it's going to be sideways. Let's say if I have a big mirror or a picture or something like that on this wall, it's going to be right there. Going right into my border so that you'll know that it cuts off, that it is going into a room. So if that was a wall or if that was a picture or something, Remembering your details, you have to do a frame or something. Usually all mirrors or pictures have frames around them. And I wasn't really trying to get into drawing. I was trying to just basically show you the perspective. So I'm going to speed this thing up. This is why my videos get so long because I give detail, which is good for a lesson because you're supposed to teach, not just show off your skills. Wow, why is this leg so long and this one's so short? Take it off the page like that. There you go. So putting other stuff in this room real quick, because I want to show you some more stuff. I didn't want to draw a room. I wanted to show you this, but since I had this, we're drawing a room. A table, carpet, all kind of things. The best thing to do is when you design a room, look in magazines, look in like um, magazines that have like house, a uh, set of furniture. They're usually the furniture is in, already in a house somewhere or um, office places that show offices and so forth. And then you can get ideas from that, or you can copy it just exact. I don't think you're gonna get sued for drawing somebody's office unless you say this is the office of you know Ronald McDonald, and then you know they might get you for that, <clears throat> especially if it's Ronald McDonald's office. But use that for references. Use it for to place furniture or for furniture design or whatever you want to do. <clears throat> so let's if I put a table here, eh, and I'm using a squares. Let's just say I put a short table here. Line up, line up, line up, and line up. So I already have this line here that's coming. I have this line here, and there should be a line here, which I'll do, and then a line straight across like that. This line is crooked. Now the whole thing is, it's about your squares, your circles, and your triangles. It's about doing your shapes, and that's something I continue to harp on when I teach drawing, you must master your shapes or you won't get very far in drawing. So if I did a square leg, it would be like that. So this one would be like this. And then you'd have a little piece over here. And you wouldn't see this. Unless this was glass, you wouldn't see this. And then you can have another statue up here of whatever.
there. Now you can have a doorway somewhere here, which is just a square, or you could have a big uh, window there. Uh, let's just say you have a nice little carpet on the floor. Uh, door, as I said, doorway. Or let's just put a big opening. Let's just say from here straight up. All the way across, and that's good that it matches the height of that wall right there, or that opening right there. And then you have your opening. So because you have your lines going in, you again will have that opening right here, this line that comes up to make that wall a little thicker. Like that. Same thing here, but you won't see it there. And you'll see some of it going here as well at the top. For a second, I didn't think you was going to see it, but you will. And then you have your opening to your, your um, whatever room. And then the room can continue. The back wall could be back here. It can't be above that. It has to be below this point here. So let's just make the point the back wall right there. And then you can have your ceiling about right here. And your wall, let's say that wall came in to about here. Hopefully I'm not going to mess this up because if I do, this whole video will be in vain. And then my ceiling right there it goes all the way over here. And I'm not going to have a back wall, so that wall goes way back around there. So this, because this is on this line here, you won't, it won't come back. It won't go down. I can have it come down, but no, it's on that line, so it's not going to come down. Could have had it a little bit, but no, it's got to stay on that line. And then you could go further and further and further back. There could be a doorway right here that takes you into another room. There could be more furniture here. As long as it's on that line, on those perspective lines, you're good to go. So... Because this is over, the top of this is over this line here. You won't see the top of this. It will go down like this and still follow those lines. This could be my crates. Here could be some storage room that houses my statues. What's with you and statues? I don't know. But anything facing you is going to be straight. You can have it... Um, sideways like this but then you, you're risking going into two-point perspective and we're not doing that yet but we'll still stick with one point perspective so what I did with this one is regular square which would follow the lines going across and then you follow in these lines here going to that point that explosion so this one again what did I do with it Oh, I had it going this way, from this side. Basically, same thing. Now, if I did two-point perspective, it would come down at an angle, but it would throw everything off. So this is still one-point perspective. And here, and here, and then down. And of course, if I want to put another rug here, maybe it's a nice you know, room that people don't want you to mess up the floors. And you can also use these as a pattern for your floor. Let's just say it was a checkerboard floor. Let's cut these in half a little bit here. That's the shelf. So we'll go with, with you know, this, that one, and then that one. So let's just say You wanted a checkerboard as, as a floor was a checkerboard design. That the third one, so it'll be this one. Next one, this next one will be white. So with well, this one, yeah, this one will be black. This one would be white. This one would be black. So you understand the pattern now, hopefully. And it'll be the same thing here, white, black. Now, to do stuff, to go back, and this is one of the things I was going to show you, to go back in space like this and make everything 
look like it's going backwards. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm not going backwards. Shrinking to go back in space. So it's white. Let's just do this. This is a rough one right here. This is, this is rough and it's not right. But I'm going to show you how to do that. So the next one across. I don't know why I'm stuck on this floor, but just because. Let's just say right here and right here. So this one's going to be black. Next one is white. That's, you just threw it off. I did. That one's white. This one's going to be black. That's white. This is going to be black. And it's got to be on that corner. They have to touch white. Yeah, anyway. Hopefully you get the gist of that one. So now let me show you how to bring stuff back in, in, in space. So let's use this. Hopefully I can use this and get it right. You have your square again. You have your lines. Just get some more lines. Just a couple more lines. That line is just wrong. As I say, you have to have those lines right. When you start to get into some serious perspective drawing, the lines have to be right. Now, let's do this. Let's have your first, first line, your first first line, first square. So this would represent these squares down here. Now let's say I want to draw a fence or something. You have to put your first pole in the ground. This is my first pole right here. And it has to go through one of these lines because that line is going to be in the middle of that pole. So that's going to kind of be your almost like your, your plus symbol again. Now <clears throat> you put your first one in and then you put your second one in however you want those two to be spaced. So let's just say this. Let's say this is my first pole I put in the, lot, in the ground. And this is right here. So I'm going to make a fence or, well, let's just say a fence for now. Let's put this here. In the ground. And that one in the ground. And it has to fall on these lines. It has to stay on these lines. Now you have a center line right here that goes through. It's going to go through all of them. So at this point of your fence or whatever you're going to do, you have to draw a line from here to here to this point right here and then go straight down to that point right there. So you got it. Top of this, center of that. That's where your first line goes across and through. Down. Where it hits, that's going to be your next place that you put your pole right there. Staying with this line here. Now again, top of your second pole, center of your third pole. It's always the top and center. Top and center. It's got to go through. Got to go through. That's where the point you drop. You put your, your, your next one. Top and center. Go through. Next point. Top and center. Next point. Same thing. Top, center, next point. Top, pole, top, center, next point. And this goes all the way back to this point, and it will be um, spaced correctly. Top and center. As long as you have your lines right, top and center, it'll, it'll be correctly. Now, the way we had the boxes, you can do boxes. The way we had the boxes, you can do this, too. If you're doing, maybe say, like... Um, this was a lower level, this was an upper level, your garage or something. You can have cars coming out from down here. But another thing which is good is this. Let's say if I have a pole going across here, I'm going to put a pole right across here. So I'll put it here. This is in line with this pole right here. It's a little low, but it's in line with that pole. Let's just say I want to put another pole behind this one or at an angle from this one. That same line, the line comes across. Whatever line this falls on, my second pole could be right here. My third pole could be right here. My fourth one, what is it, one, two, three, four, the fourth one goes across, can be right here. Or if I want to stagger them to be like something like this. First one, second one, where is that second one? Second one, right here. Third one, right here. Fourth one right there. So, and that that would work doing a floor as well. 
If you, you know, you're getting two points perspective, I'll stop right there like that. And it'll, it'll, it, it works as well getting in two point perspective because that's going way back here to another perspective point. But when you have your grid, it makes it easy. And the same thing, let's just say these are people. If you want to put a P, if you want to put soldiers in line, same thing, you can turn this into a person. Well, with your grid, let me step back a little bit. With your grid on your ground for each pole, once you put those poles in the ground, you have your grid line. You already have this. So each one is a different space on that ground. Let's just say I want to put a soldier or a person, person right here. And that's my people shortcut. That's a simple, simple person shortcut. It's just basically drawing a capital A, putting a head on it and an arm and an arm and just make that A a little longer. That's a shortcut for a person. Now, if I wanted to put somebody behind him, I'll say one, two, three, let's say four. So I'll put fourth line here, top here. So now you can either put his head on the top of this line or you can put his shoulder on the top of that line. And usually, most times I'll go for the shoulder because the shoulders are somewhat flat, but I won't this time. So we have this, this is my fourth person, second person. So these people are, how am I gonna say, these are in their, the right size to fit that room. Unless one guy's like the Hulk and the other guy's like uh, a midget. So what if I wanna put one guy away in the back? I'll take this pole that's way in the back and I'll put him over here, straight across, straight across, and I'll put him over here. He's gotta fit, his feet have gotta be here and his head has to be here. Unless you did the other way where his shoulders are there and these people fit in this room. And so your doorway can go all the way back here or your floor can go all the way back here. So now these guys are in this long corridor. And if you wanna do a vehicle, some kind of car or something back here. So this is your floor. So you wanna take it above the floor. So square again. Going back, always start out with your square. Now, if you're trying to do vehicles, the best thing to do is again, get you some, um, uh, get a perspective, get a um, reference, a perspective, get a reference to whatever type of vehicle you wanna do. And basically it's just squares, rectangles and circles. So, but you have to judge how big your vehicle is gonna be in the room. A rectangle, a roof, and then you can sharpen it or, or however you want to do to the vehicle. So if I just did a quick rough. Rough to a vehicle, four door, four door, whatever, four door explorer. As I say, for things like gr uh, grills and your lights and your your side panels and so forth, you'd have to get a um, reference reference for that. All right, let's do one more thing with this. I'm sorry that I was shoving it over to the side. I'm, I'm not looking at my monitor when I'm drawing. I had to reset my camera to a different angle. Now. What was I saying? Side, your room size. Let's just say this guy was six feet right here. With these squares here, you're doing this again. Eh, 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 eh. And usually when you do squares, you want to say each one is a foot. It just makes it easier. So this is, let's just say this is one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot, five foot, six foot, seven foot. Let's just, just say that. But since I've got this guy here, he goes all the way over. Let's say this guy is six foot. This would be the six foot um, height measurement right here. So then you would put like six or five going from here. 
And that's the same way across the room. I know this is not a foot, but you say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's how you decide to, to the size of your room or the measure of your room. If you try to do like an eight foot room or, or six foot room or a 10 foot room, you have your point. And I know this went over in half an hour and I said I didn't want to go over half an hour. You have your uh, um, plus symbol. You have your X. And then you have your box around that. Now each one, this should be from corner to corner to corner to corner, like that. that that's, that's starting your perfection. Then let's just say center line again. Center here. Center here. Now you have one, two, three, four. These are going to be feet. The one here. So this is eight foot room. So if I did four more, center, center, and center. So now you have an eight foot room. So you can do the same thing on here. Center, center, and center. So that would be an eight by eight foot room. Center, center center and you can adjust your size of your room by your boxes so if i had a guy let's just say what was it one one two three 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 let's go this guy's three foot because keeping in keeping in mind with the room so his head is going to be here his foot is going to be somewhere right here so this guy is like three feet tall and you understand what i'm saying because if i did a Small. If I made them smaller, then my room would be bigger. Then, I, then the guy could be actual six feet, and the room could be what 12, 12 feet or whatever, like that. So that's a way to measure it. So if you have your room here, if you're drawing your room, and you say I want to draw a refrigerator, a refrigerator is about six and a half feet. So just I'm just adding some more just to make it look a little more realistic to you. So you would say one, two, three, four, five, let's say six, and that makes them smaller than six and a half feet. I'm drawing a kitchen. Here's my refrigerator on this wall. Here's the wall. Here's the corner of the wall. It doesn't have to be here. You can put the corner somewhere else, but just to make it easier, put the corner right there. So here's the floor. Here's the corner of the floor. Here, here, refrigerator comes out like this. Depends on how your refrigerator sits. Come out, you're always going to draw your square or your rectangle. Follow your line in and in, and here's my refrigerator, six and a half feet tall or high. Here's my freezer door right here. Here's my the refrigerator side door, your handle, your handle. So if I have a child that comes to this want, wanting to get his milk or ice cream or something like that, you know this is like six and a half feet, so the child is like four feet. You want to say, where is it? Um, this is the floor. You, you count your one, two, three, four. So the, the kid's head would be about here. And I know I'm off again with my spacing, but you should understand it. Bring it here just to make it look more pleasingly pleasant. So here's the kid here. He's here. This is the floor right here. So his feet has to touch the floor. This is the center of the refrigerator. So his feet are going to touch right here. And then he's trying to get his milk from the refrigerator or whatever he's going to get. From the refrigerator some kimchi like that and then so on and so forth and so on so this is if this is six feet six and a half feet or higher tall a refrigerator is and a person is way back here let's say this is the end of the room draw another box into that square here's your ceiling so you have another person back here and that person is six feet his head is going to be here the floor is here it goes across because he's got a step step on standing on something. So as I say, the head is here. And that's how you keep people in size, proportioned size. Yeah, let's do this refrigerator. So this is going to be the end of this video because I know I wanted to keep it 30 minutes, but 
I have a curse on me and I'm unable to keep my stuff under 30 minutes. I don't see how people can do videos and keep 10 minute videos when they do vlogs and so forth. But, you know, God bless them because I haven't figured that secret out yet. I know it takes a lot of editing, but it's hard to edit out important details. So that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to do a part two and I'm going to pick up from there and then do some more one point and then jump into some two point and then start showing you how to do like vehicles and that vehicles which are just squares and trees and other such things and how to plant them if you're doing an outside um outside background drawing to show you the same thing and get into some two points some three points so and i know i had this on my um or similar to this up on my site but as I said in my last video, YouTube will only let you put so many videos up and then they start deleting your, your earlier ones to make your last one. So if you have 200 videos up and you put 201, they delete that very first one. So I'm at the point where a lot of my old videos have been deleted. So I'm redoing it again because I'm getting more um, people. Granted, I have more people on how to do these things and I had them done already, but YouTube took it off. So I'm redoing it. So <clears throat> that's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe as always. And I will see you guys in the next class, part two. All right, later. Never stop art in five, four, three, two, one. All right, that's it for today's lesson. Now, I know there was a lot to take in and uh, there might be some spaces or some points in the video where you guys didn't understand. And I'm gonna make a part two very soon, if not start the part two today. But before I get it out and up, if you guys really didn't understand a couple things that I said, let me know in the comments or email me at my email address and say, hey, I didn't understand this. And then just put the number or the time stamp down where whatever problem was that you couldn't understand like two minutes and 22 seconds into the video or whatever just say hey i couldn't understand what you said at five minutes and eight seconds or something so that when i do a part two i'll be able to address those things that you didn't understand because i don't want to continue to go and then leave you behind stuck five minutes into the video and you didn't get anything else out of it so yeah just do that and i'll try to try to um answer whatever questions you have so thanks for watching Thumbs up, as I say, hit the uh, like button and subscribe. Call some people up, say, yo, yo, subscribe to this man's video. He's tight, tight. So, all right, that's it. Let's go. Let's go. It's over. Bye.